The Ponderosa Pine is an important resource for Ute people who lived in the Rocky Mountains for generations. Ute people use the different parts of the Ponderosa Pine for food, medicine, and to make baskets. Where we're standing at, you're just seeing this one tree. You go over that way, right over there where those big old dunes, there's a place called Indian Grove, and it has all these trees, a whole bunch of them there. And that's where we were at. So when you see these trees, you respect them, you pay attention, and you realize this is one place where your people once walked. This is one place where we were once at and that we stood and that we gathered and we did our food and we got our food stuff and that we were inhabited and where we lived at. Because we weren't always here, we moved around. And probably about this time, we were probably already up in the mountains. So you see these pine needles that are laying down here? These pine needles that we're gonna gather here later on or that I'm going to gather with some help from some of you is that they used to make um. They used to take some of these brown ones or they take some of the green ones and they would soak them. And they would soak them and they would take that yucca plant over there and they would process that yucca plant and they would make string out of it. So you process the leaves of that yucca plant and you scrape it all down, you put it in water, you work it and work it till you start getting the fine. And you keep doing it like this all the way around it. You keep wrapping the string around? Yeah, and then oh, you're going to okay. only do it for a little bit. You're going to do it for a little bit, and then you're going to pull this, and you're going this way, because this is where your, see where your needle comes out this way? Uh -huh. So you're going to, as you go this way, you're going to keep stuffing scooting, needles and Scooting more in. in there, yes. So you're going this way like this, and you're wrapping it this way. You're wrapping it. And something that Clifford had shared with me, he'd go with his grandmother, and they would get sap from the tree, and she'd take the sap, and she'd heat it, and they take dirt clods and put it in there and it was like making like a glue. And then when they'd make the, the water jugs, that's what they would coat the inside. You know, once they use the willow, make the structure of the, the vessel and they would take the sap and said, his grandmother would pour it in there with the dirt clods and then some rocks and they would like shake it back and forth and it would coat the inside and then they would do the outside. Um, when I was conducting an experiment like with hafting a projectile point onto an arrow shaft, we would actually use the uh, the sap and uh, deer dung because it has grass fiber in it mm -hmm. and melt it down and then use it to coat the uh, sinew mm -hmm. to reinforce the bond. So that would make sense. You people learned to peel the outer bark of ponderosa pine to reach the soft inner bark, which could be eaten or used for weaving. Culturally peeled trees like this has a lot of significance to it because this is a, uh, kind of an established landmark for the people that was there and uh, so a lot of our people did this a lot of the youth bands did did the, the peel trees but along the mountain areas is where a lot of the uh, people lived when people want to ask you how do you know that your people did this stuff well, that's one indicator and that's one story that tells you that's factual so you can go around and you can say, yes, this is what my people did. Because you know that it, there's something out there that is dated that matches to what us, what we did as you people. And one thing that was, this was a woman's, this was a woman's chore that we would do. And they would come out and they would do those things and, and to c c uh, collect the cambium. And it's called cambium because it's the inner bark. You know, we, we were talking to one archaeologist and he was uh, saying that uh, there were some peeled trees like this up there um, along the South Dakota and uh, was that Kansas border. There's peeled trees like this up there and they asked the forester up there, what, what, you know, what, is, what was it like that? And he didn't know. He said, um, you think your people went that far? I told him, yeah. Uh, you know, back in the late 1900s, or back in the late 1800s, it's when a group of um, Utes went up there to uh, stay with the Sioux people. But, but they had been, maybe they went down in that part of the country. And... Myself, I think, because there's ponderosa pines up there in the, in the Black Hills, 
I think my my you know some of the some of the elders that went up there did did some of this. We find some of this all the way down to where Ponderosa grows, all the way south uh, into New Mexico, and all the way uh, west. Peel trees like this. It's a landmark, and it's uh, culturally significant to us. And uh, women were the one that did this, and they're the ones that. Uh, knew how to take care and take all that bark off there, the inner bark, and use it. Because when you're coming out of eating dry, dry meat, dry fruit all winter long, this helps your um, digestive system. So that's why they used to use doing it, do the field trees in the spring. And sometimes they'd also come from the bottom and sometimes you can still see the, the axe marks on the bottom and then they could, they could also wedge it up and they get a big old peel from that. And you see how you can see some of those axe marks still on those? Yeah. That could be from Ute people. And sometimes you could take some of that out um, and it's a nice fire starter too because it's all that sap, you know? Um, and uh, people have done studies on these trees and a handful, like a serving size, has nine glasses of milk worth of calcium in it. So this, like um, Alden talked about, like in the spring, after people kind of ran out of their food, you know, and you just had a little bit of jerky left maybe, this would be so nice to have, wouldn't it? In the springtime and some sugar. Today, elders, scientists, and land managers are working together to preserve culturally modified ponderosa pines. These are nice, still living trees. So we can use dendrochronology to date when the Ute people peeled this tree, and not just the year, but the season, which is pretty cool. And we don't usually get that kind of data um, from sites. Um, so they're pretty special. And so Kent and I have worked uh, a lot together when we do prescribed burns or when we get a a fire start in this country, we acknowledge that these are the last of these trees, right? We've had a lot have fallen over, they've burned, uh, disease has gotten them, or woodcutters have come and gotten them. So these are really um, some of the last, I call them an organic cultural resource. And so we have um, a protocol for our fuels and fire guys that we uh, protect these. When we're doing prescribed burns, they, they would brush out around and, and protect these for the future because, you know, they really are the last and because I still want to show you guys these trees as long as we can. <laughs>